This lesson's all about gravitational force, so let's talk about what a G is. Uh, yesterday in class, or the other day in class anyway, we watched a few videos about G forces. We, we had Navy pilots saying, oh, if you got, if your head weighs 10 pounds, well, when you're pulling 9 Gs, it weighs 90 pounds. Well, what does that really mean? Because you didn't really explain how you get G forces. G forces are a comparison to the force of gravity that you're feeling. So, we, inhabitants of Earth, experience 1 G as we stand on the surface of Earth. What is 1G? Well, 1G is the acceleration of gravity, 9.81 meters per square second. You already knew that. That's not new information to you. If we look at the space station, though, we can talk about uh, G-forces in a different way. We could simulate gravity. And let's say we had a space station like this, and we wanted to have artificial gravity. What we could do is we could spin that ring, the habitat ring that I have uh, here. See, habitat ring. We can have that spinning such that the outer edge of it has a centripetal acceleration of 9.81 meters per square second. It would feel like you were in a normal gravity environment there on the edge. In the middle, wouldn't be the same because the acceleration would be different as you traveled in towards, uh, assuming it was all moving as one piece. Well, let's look at how gravity itself works. So first thing to ask, what causes the moon to orbit the Earth? Well, of course, that's gravity. And the gravitational force between the moon and the Earth is rather important force. Uh, it's a mutually attractive force between two particles of matter. It doesn't matter what items you're talking about. You and your computer, you and your phone, you and the chair you're sitting on have a gravitational force between each other. The thing is, when you're inside the gravitational field of a large object like a planet, those gravitational forces are so small that they might as well not exist, but they're just so teeny tiny it doesn't matter. How do we calculate it? Well, we use this equation, where the force of gravity, uh, I'm sorry, the gravitational force is equal to G. What's G? G is the gravitational, universal gravitational constant. Negative, or I'm sorry, not negative, 6.673 times 10 to the negative 11th Newton meter squared over kilogram squared. That's the capital G. And to find gravitational force, capital G, times mass 1, so let's say mass of Earth, times mass 2, mass of the moon, divided by the radius between them squared. Now I hate how your book uses R here. It shouldn't be R. It really should be diameter. Because in reality, it's not half the distance between the Earth and the moon. It's the entire distance between the center of mass of the Earth and center of mass of the Moon. That is what you would calculate. And you always have to calculate from center of mass to center of mass. This is extremely important. So let's look at a sample problem. Here we have, uh, this is straight out of your book, um, you have a green ball and a yellow ball. They are separated by an unknown distance with a force of 8.92 times 10 to the negative 11th newtons. Uh, 3 kilograms, 4 kilograms, we want to solve for it. So what we need to do is we need to set up our problem. Force of gravity equals, so force of gravity equals, put our little sign there, G, I didn't copy G. squared times 6.673 times 10 to the negative 11th and uh, what you do here is then to solve to solve we would have to multiply the radius squared over divide by the force and then we'd have to square root both sides and we come up with an answer. And I believe the answer in the book is 0.3 meters. So they're only 30 centimeters apart. So that leads us to um, a couple questions about how this equation will work. So let's say two objects are separated by a distance of 4 meters. If the gravitational force between them is 20 newtons, what will the force be if the distance is doubled? So what effect will, um, ooh, I'm writing in black pen, what effect will doubling the distance do to this problem? Well, let's see, you'd be dividing by a 
larger number. So you would actually, by doing that, you're going to not just make your force two times less, so 10 newtons, it would be two squared less. It would be four times less because of this whole squared thing right there. And by doing that, it wouldn't be 20 newtons, it would be down to five newtons. Let's turn the tables here. What if we separate our objects, instead um, we cut that distance in half? Well now, again, divided by two, that gets squared. You're gonna have a quarter underneath there, and it's gonna be even a bigger amount. So uh, that would give you times four, that would give you 80 newtons instead. Just a way to look at how how that happens because of the r squared down in there. Let's look at another aspect of it. What about if we change masses? Now we have two equal object two objects of equal mass have 30 newtons between them. But what if you just double the mass of object one? How would that change your answer? If all we did was double a mass, all you do is double your answer. And if we cut a mass in half, we cut our answer in half because they're in the numerator, so we'd have a little different effect on things. All right. One last thing here, and then we'll wrap up. What about if I do this? Aha! So you do have a homework assignment, page 232, 1 through 3. Good luck.